In this video, we're going to be taking a look at two block and pulley problems where they're typically solved with forces and Newton's second law, but we're going to be solving them with energy concepts as opposed to um, analyzing the forces. So let's take a look at this first scenario over here, this vertical pulley. Um, and we have a three kilogram block and a two kilogram block. And what we're going to do is solve for the velocity of the entire system right before the three kilogram block hits the ground. So you can consider that the velocity of the three kilogram, the two kilogram or the entire system bit, but since they're connected, their velocities are gonna be equivalent to each other. So we're gonna use the conservation of energy. And from that, we're gonna be taking a look at all the types of initial energy and all the types of final energy and the sum of all of those energies for each of those blocks before and after is going to be the same. So let's take a look at what initial values we're gonna have. So we're gonna have some gravitational potential energy from our two kilogram block. We're gonna have some gravitational potential energy from our three kilogram block and both of them are at rest initially. So that's about all we have because there's no elastic and there's no movement. Now afterwards, once the three kilogram block starts to fall down, both of them um, move and the three kilogram block is gonna reach the ground so that no longer has gravitational potential energy, but our two kilogram block does have some final gravitational potential energy because it's actually gonna be lifted higher off the ground. Now both of them are moving. So we do have kinetic energy for both of them. I'm gonna club that up into one big k value and i'll say kinetic energy of the system so instead of treating them as separate um, blocks with their own individual kinetic energy we'll just find the kinetic energy of both of them just all together now what we're going to do is we're going to use two formulas we're going to use mgh and we're going to use one half mb squared and then go ahead and solve for the velocity at the very end right before the three kilogram block hits So all I did was expand each of those different types of energies um, out to its formula with its actual number values. So we have the MGH of both of the blocks, the two kilogram. So we have the M, the G 9.8, and it's one meter off the ground. For the three kilogram, 9.8, and it's two meters off the ground. And then for our final energy values, when our three kilogram drops all the way to the ground, it doesn't have kinetic energy, but it does pull the rope two meters downward, which makes this one go two meters upwards. So this one rises up two meters to a three meter height. That's where this three came from. So two times 9.8 times three, and then the kinetic energy of both of the blocks together. So I put five kilograms for the two and three combined. So one half five V squared. Um, turns out that these two happen to be the same coincidentally. So they'll actually basically cancel each other out. And then we have 19.6 equals 2.5 V squared, divide both sides by two and a half square root. And then we have the velocity of each of the blocks right before the three kilogram block strikes the ground as 2.8 meters per second. All right, so let's go ahead and clear a little space and go ahead and work on this second problem. Now for the second one, we're gonna take the same approach. We're gonna take all of the initial energy values and then set them equal to all the final um, energy values, assuming that it's frictionless and that there's no heat lost in the system. So we have the three kilogram block um, tugging the whole entire si system and then falling two meters towards the ground. So initially we have some gravitational potential energy for the two kilogram block. We have some gravitational potential energy for the three kilogram block, but some nothing has been released, so no kinetic energy yet. 
And then afterwards, the two kilogram block still has some gravitational potential energy. The three kilogram block loses all of it because it hits the ground. And then again, we have the kinetic energy of both blocks. Let's take the kinetic energy of the whole entire system and call that one big five kilogram clump. So um, one thing we could do is we can go ahead and cross out these two UG2s because the value of the gravitational potential energy isn't going to change because it's sliding horizontally and there's no change in height. So whatever initial gravitational potential you had in the beginning is the same as the end. So there is no delta UG. There's no change in the gravitational potential energy. Now for the UG3, there is, and then we can set that equal to the kinetic energy of the system. So let's go ahead and break that out into all of its um, individual number values and see what we get for the velocity of the system. All right, so we went ahead and plugged in the 3 times 9.8 times 2, the initial gravitational potential energy of the 3 kilogram block, and is that lost energy? It got transferred into kinetic energy so that the system remains at a constant total value. So <clears throat> we have 1 half uh, 5 kilograms, the mass of the whole system, times V squared, just divided both sides by 2.5 and square rooted um, similarly to the last one. And we got a velocity of 4.85 meters per second because this one has less resistance than that vertical pulley. Um, what I'll do in addition um, to this is after I solve a problem like this, I would double check it using forces and kinematics. So I'm going to go ahead and do that step real quick, although it's not necessary. So um, just because I've done a handful of these problems or more than a handful of them, I know that this is the driving force of the whole system. So we'll say the three times 9.8 is the net force that drives the entire system, assuming that it's frictionless and the whole entire system is five kilograms times the net acceleration. So we go ahead and divide both sides by five and then we get an acceleration of 5.88 meters per second squared. Now, what we can do is um, we can use that in a kinematic formula. Um, I can go ahead and take this formula, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2A delta Y. And then I can go ahead and solve for the Vf right over here. So we have Vf squared and then Vi squared goes to zero because it starts at rest. So 2 times negative 9.8. times negative two. Oh, actually, sorry, not, not negative 9.8 because it's not in free fall. Um, negative 5.88 because that's the acceleration going downwards for the system. And then we can go ahead and square root the product of these numbers. And then the VF does come out to 4.85 meters per second. Now, because I'm a little bit more comfortable using forces um, and kinematics, I like to use that as a way to double check my answer and still get the solution and see if it matches up with the ideas that I used previously using the conservation of energy. So it turns out it all checked out. So everything looks good. Hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.